In the best of the rest of the news, DuPont Chemical has been engaged in an intense legal battle for the last 15 years about a man-made chemical called C8 that was used extensively in a number of products for much of the last century. That chemical is called C8 because of its eight carbon chain, which makes up the central part of the chemical. C8 is an exceptionally stable chemical, and the structure of the chemical also causes it to break the surface tension of water. Thus, it's waterproof, and because of its waterproof nature and its stable structure, for more than 60 years, C8 was a key chemical used in the production of Teflon, and it was later used in products like Gore-Tex, microwave popping bags, fast food wrappers, coffee cups, bicycle lubricants. It was produced mainly in a DuPont plant in Parkersburg, West Virginia on the Ohio River, which gave the company an easy way to dispose of the chemical until the 1960s. And according to a 2007 study based on DuPont's purchasing records, the plant was putting out an estimated 19,000 pounds of C8 into the air in 1984. But by 1999, that amount had increased to 87,000 pounds of C8 being released into both the air and the water. According to that study, between 1951 and 2003, the Parkersburg plant had spread nearly 2.5 million pounds of C8 into the surrounding areas. And because C8 is such a stable chemical, most of those chemicals have spread beyond the local environment and continue to persist. So that now, even though the chemical didn't exist a century ago, C8 is in the blood of 99.7% of Americans, as well as in newborn human babies, breast milk, and even umbilical cord blood. And that's really bad news because C8 has been connected with ulcerative colitis, rectal cancer, testicular cancer, swelling of the liver, and birth defects. So what's happening with this chemical now? And why was DuPont allowed to dump so much of this chemical into our air and our waterways? Here now to discuss how, what DuPont, uh, excuse me, how to, here now to discuss what DuPont knew about C8, how they covered it up, and what's happening with the ongoing lawsuits against the chemical giant is Sharon Lerner, journalist and author of The War on Moms, on life in a family unfriendly nation, and a senior fellow at Demos. She's also a frequent contributor to The Intercept, where you can now find the third part of her three-part investigative piece about the history of C8 and DuPont's cover-up of its dangers. Sharon, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Hi. Great to see you again. What brought this issue to your attention? Well, you know, I actually started researching the New Jersey piece of this story, which if you haven't read part three, that comes in part three. Um, New Jersey had begun to regulate this chemical, or I should say they were proposing a safe water standard, drinking water standard for uh, C8. There's this little group of uh, water experts appointed by the state that's in charge of drinking water quality in New Jersey. And they were quietly going about their business. And after they came forward with the proposed uh, drinking water standard for New Jersey, um, which would have been the, the lowest and the most stringent in the nation, the board was shut down. Um, and though it met very regularly, uh, you know, several times a year for you know, more than 20 years, after it came up with that proposal, it was shut down for almost four years entirely. And so I was looking into that and trying to figure out what was going on there. And I knew it was a DuPont-made chemical. And I was talking to folks in the DEP there and just kind of trying to understand what happened. And, um, and then I realized that there was this much bigger lawsuit that was uh, happening. And one of the lawyers, I, I ended up uh, getting a hold of, of the some expert testimony and, and some of the legal documents in that case and it and it became clear to me that this is you know that it was a much bigger story and that it was worth trying to trying to write the whole thing the whole or, or summarize the whole thing is a really huge issue right why do you think that it's taken so long for this to get any public attention I mean these, this is the kind of story that 20 30 years ago 60 minutes was all over yeah. Well, I think partly because it's so complicated. It's really, I mean, the piece, so we did three pieces in the Intercept, and I, I think it was more than 16,000 words. And I feel like I left huge, bit, huge parts out because there's just so much to it. And it's so difficult to explain. Um, it requires, you know, an understanding of the history of, 
of the company, which um, started making the chemical in 1954. And because it's the company of scientists and because they had the very first in-house toxicology lab, they ended up doing all this research um, on the chemical. And part of the problem was that they didn't report much of what they did, even though some of it was very disturbing and, and showed indications of health effects in animals and later in humans. So just just kind of getting through that that bit of it is huge. And then what's happened since then is that, um, as you were mentioning in your introduction, there's been um, major contamination of this area, West Virginia and Ohio. Um, and so the people in the surrounding area ended up um, filing a class action suit. So, and that's this other huge complicated part of the story. And what happened was they ended up coming up with this settlement. And the, part of the settlement was that they were using this money from DuPont to pay for research on the community to figure out if exposure to the chemical actually caused health problems, which is something that wasn't entirely clear for a long time. And as you mentioned earlier, what that group of scientists ended up um, finding was that, it, that C8 exposure was probably linked to six illnesses. Um, and there are testicular cancer, kidney cancer. I think you mentioned earlier um, uh, another kind of cancer, rectal, rectal cancer, and it was actually ulcerative colitis. Anyway, there were six diseases in all. Uh, and so that became this other huge kind of messy scientific uh, problem. And the last piece, uh, which as you mentioned is up now on The Intercept, goes into another really complicated area, which is how, um, and I should say this is an unregulated chemical, which is to say we don't have a national drinking water standard for it. It's not regulated through um, the Toxic Substances Control Act or the uh, Clean Water Drinking Act. It's not, uh, so we don't have a, a safe level set. So, so how, how the EPA dealt with this chemical is a, a long story, and that's what part three I, tells. Aside from its, I mean, you know, its, its, dispersion, its dispersion into the environment is, is huge. It's a huge story, and the, you know, the, the workers at the plant and all this stuff. Um, but I, I'm curious, this uh, Teflon, or varieties of Teflon, I guess, are, is fairly ubiquitous from pizza boxes to coffee cups to, to you know, popcorn, microwave popcorn containers to, yeah. to cooking utensils. Is it mm -hmm. dangerous? Well, you know, the EPA did some good research on sources of, sources of exposure. So I think you may have also mentioned in your introduction that virtually all of us have this chemical in our blood. Right, C8. It's not completely understood how we got exposed, but definitely consumer products are part of it. That said, the Teflon pans is not the major source. I think it's actually, you mentioned popcorn, uh, microwave popcorn bags is one, but an even bigger source of exposure we think is the stain-proof coating that goes on carpets, mm. um, and which is especially a concern for infants and toddlers who are crawling around, you know, on carpets, and I think also uh, stain-proof and waterproof clothing. Wow, wow. So what, you know, wh there's currently litigation around this. What is the essence of that litigation and where is it going? Yeah. Okay, so, so there was this class action suit I mentioned which stemmed from the contamination in West Virginia and Ohio. And partly the settlement of that suit in 2005 came up with, with this science panel. Another part of it said that whatever the science panel finds, if there are any linked diseases, and as I mentioned, there were six, then the people in, this, in the class who have those diseases can sue for personal injury. So there are 3,500 of those cases that are coming up now. The first of them is coming to trial in September in Ohio. And so, you know, we'll see what happens with those, whether um, they, they may settle or whether they're actually gonna, you know, go in front of a jury. and. So uh, that's part of what's happening. Yeah. 
It's remarkable stuff. Sharon Lerner, uh, thanks so much for the great investigative reporting you're doing, sharing the stories with us on The Intercept. Is there a fourth piece coming? We don't have one plan yet, but okay. we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll cover the trials. It sure looks to me like you've got a, at least a good solid beginning of a book here. Sharon, thanks a lot for being with us tonight. <laughs> okay, thanks so much.